Hey guys, today I'll be showing you how to add advanced Steam sessions to Survival Game Kit V2. A um, couple of side notes before we get started. Number one, to test this properly, you need to have two different PCs, both running Windows, both with Steam installed and open, and they both must be using different Steam accounts. Um, otherwise, they won't. This won't work properly. A um, couple of other things. Um, Advanced Steam Sessions has an issue with ping. It doesn't display the right ping. It will just say 999. Um, that's a problem with the plugin. You can look up information about that. There's different workarounds. It will be down to you to deal with that. Um, and I'm not going to be doing a dedicated server here. All I'm going to be doing is adding or replacing the um, UE4 Connect uh, code with the Advanced Steam Session Connect code. So please keep that in mind. Um, so to get started, um, in the description, I'm going to link this page here. Um, and here is where you can download the um, advanced uh, Steam sessions for all of the different engine versions. I'm using um, 4.24, so I'm going to download this one. Um, but you could you know, download whichever engine version you need. So I'm going to do that quickly now. So once you've got that downloaded, you can right click and hit extract tool and I'm just going to extract it into the same folder. So let that finish quickly. So once that's done, we're going to go to our Unreal project that we're adding advanced team sessions to. I'm just going to go to content, we can right click and we can do uh, show and explorer and that will take us to the um, project files. We're going to go to the main uh, project file and we're going to right click, do new folder and we're going to call this plug ins like that with a capital P. Then uh, we want to go back to our uh, folder where we extracted our advanced sessions, open this up and we'll take advanced sessions and we're just going to drag that into plugins. Then we're going to um, restart our project to activate the plugins. So once you've restarted your project, we can go to, um, you may get a little pop-up that says about updating a file, just hit update and that should be fine. Um, you might not get it, but if you do, just make sure you do that. Then uh, we can go to settings, plugins, and under installed, we can see we've got our um, our sessions plugins here. They're installed and they're both enabled, which is good. Um, so we'll get started by going to uh, the host, uh, host new game server widget, then event graph. And in if we go to um, event graph, uh, you should find this create sessions node here. We're going to replace this with the advanced session one. So we're going to search for create a session, create advanced session. Now there's a ton of uh, extra settings on this node. I'm not going to go through all of them. Um, there's loads of information about advanced ses sessions online. You guys can, can go and check those out. I'm just going to show you how to get it set up in a basic way, plugged into survival game kit. So we're going to take this pin uh, from the um, text box, plug it into public connections, uh, owning player into player controller, and then is checked into LAN, um, and just leave everything else um, as is. Um, then from extra settings, we're going to drag out and do make. Then we'll drag out from this to pin and do make again. We'll use make literal session property string. And we're going to set the key to name with a capital N and the value to SGKV2, all capitals. Um, this is used later on so we know um, what servers we're looking for when we look for available servers. Um, we'll tell it to look for servers with this uh, information. Um, so this is super important, make sure you have this. Um, now we can, uh, we can just compile and save this. Next, we're going to go back to showcase and we're going to open up the host load game server um, widget as well. Go to event graph and in here, um, in the buttons collapse node, you'll find another create one. And we're just going to quickly do the same thing um, again. So create advanced session. Um, I'm just going to run through this one quicker because it's, it's pretty much exactly the same. Uh, that into there. Drag this out, make this so like that we've got everything connected up again uh, just like we had in the other widget so we can compile and save this now 
Next, we're going to go back to showcase and we're going to search for serve, uh, server. Oh, that's not how you spell server. Server, and we want to find server browser. We'll bring this over here, go to the event graph, and in here, uh, in the um, buttons collapse node here, we'll open this up and we're going to do um, find sessions. Not, sorry, not that one. Find sessions and we want the uh, find sessions advanced so there we can plug this one in and we're just plugging it in like this one is so success goes into here failure goes into here and then results plug into the servers on uh, this node we can delete this one out we'll plug uh, this into player controller and use LAN into use LAN again I mentioned it earlier but make sure that you've followed the DIY guide it'll be linked in the description um, if you already have like this and uh, this here in your project you don't need to worry about it it's already done if you don't you really need to follow that DIY guide um, that's super important but um, anyway going back to where we were um, one thing you need to do is make sure max results is set to something like I'll put 99 you can set it to what you want but I wouldn't set it to something like crazy high 99 is like a good value um, again we've got some other options here you can play about with these if you like um, I'm just leaving them as default um, for this video um, we're going to drag out from filters do make then we'll drag out again and do make and we want to um, make literal session search property then drag out from session search property and do make again and we want make literal session property string and here we're going to set it exactly like we did earlier with the um, create session node. So name with a capital N and the value is uh, SGKV2, all caps. Um, and this basically tells it to find servers with this, um, this value. Um, so it knows exactly which ones we, we should return. So um, again, there's, there's other options, but you can play about that. I'm leaving it as default. Um, we're going to compile and save this now. So there's a couple of other side notes I want to say. Um, first thing is the server name. I don't know how to make custom server names. Again, this is something you can look into yourself. Um, loads of information about advanced sessions, so you'll have to check that out yourself. Um, I can show you that where that information is set, which would be in the, if we search for listing, we go to server listing, and in here we have our server name and that's actually uh, set in the return server name function which is in here um, so if you find a way to set your server names um, as you want you can um, add that into here um, but I'm not going to be going into that and again there is an issue with ping not working correctly with advanced sessions there are workarounds but a lot of it involves C++ so you'll have to look into that yourself this is an issue with the plugin not with survival game kit I can't stress that enough um, so next we're ready to just save all um, and we're going to right click our project go to show in explorer and we'll bring this back over here to take us to our folder we'll go to the main folder here then to config and to default engine now that's going to bring up our notepad here and uh, there's some information we need to paste into here um, this will be linked in the description I'll bring it over here so this um, web page here has a ton of information about um, online subsystems with Unreal Engine. It's definitely worth reading. There's a lot of useful information, um, but we need a piece of information in here that's uh, already set up for us. So if we scroll right down to where it says finish settings, um, we need to, con we need to um, highlight and copy all of this. Then we'll minimize this out. And in here, you can see we've got on online subsystem is set to null by default. We're just going to highlight that and do control V and that will just replace it. Um, and you can see that that's put in our uh, new Steam uh, subsystem settings. Um, this Steam dev app ID is basically a unique ID to every game on Steam that tells Steam what game it is. Um, Unreal has a default one, which is 480. Um, which is great for debugging. You can leave that as this um, if you're just debugging. If you have a game you know, set up through Steam already, 
Um, somewhere in your sort of control panel or whatever on Steam, you'll have an app ID that you can put here instead. But if you're just testing, you can just leave it as 480 and that's fine. Um, we can do uh, file save now to save our changes. So next for these um, changes to be applied, we just need to uh, go back to our project here, save all and then give it a quick restart. So I've just restarted my project and we're back in the engine. Uh, what we're going to do to test that it's worked is we're going to click this little drop down and we're going to hit standalone game um, and give it a second. This might take a while to load, it'll be like a black screen like this. It's not crashed, it just has to compile a lot of stuff. So just let it do its thing and then I'll start recording when it comes back on. So once we're uh, loaded, you can actually see I've got the Steam overlay thing pop up there. That means that we, we know it's worked, it's hooked into Steam. If I can uh, open up the Steam overlay here, it says I'm playing uh, Space War. We've got uh, you know all of our UI working and we can run around. Um, but a couple of things, um, that's pretty much it, but a couple of things um, to listen to is, I'm just going to quit this out, um, and we'll change it to play, play and viewport because it's a lot quicker to load. Um, in the, uh, hang on, let's turn off that. I just want to show you some settings. Um, when you're testing, um, again, the best way to test this is two different PCs, both with Steam installed and running with different accounts. Um, and then when you actually are testing this, um, you need to do it in a packaged game, obviously. Um, and when you're in the main menu and you're creating your server, um, make sure use LAN is disabled because if you're using LAN, um, people on different internet connections won't find your server. So make sure this is ticked off when you click uh, create server. And then in the server browser, again, make sure use LAN is ticked off. Um, otherwise you won't be able to find other people's servers. So that's really important. Um, if when you hit play um, earlier on with standalone game, the Steam overlay didn't come up, make sure you have Steam running uh, in your tray um, and that it's logged in. Um, if it still doesn't come up, you need to go back through and check that you haven't missed anything um, because those are the only steps to getting Steam uh, working like that. So that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I'm not going to go into doing dedicated servers. There's tons of information about that online already. Um, and that requires things like source uh, build versions of the engine. Um, it requires you know doing some things in C++. So you can look into that more advanced stuff if you want. But using this, you can um, create servers on your PC and have a friend you know, on a different internet connection connect into your game using Steam. Um, the links for everything that I showed on screen will be in the description and you know have a read of them because there's loads more advanced information in there if you want to enable some more advanced features you can but that information is in those links um, so that's pretty much it guys if you have any questions please leave a comment and thank you for watching